So let's talk about another issue that's not going to get resolved in 20 minutes, and that's the transportation question. We have some viewers who are wondering how that's all going to work out, and of course, we've got the governor's proposal. Uh, we have uh, some discussion from uh, the House and Senate, um, and whether or not to increase or not increase taxes, and if so, what taxes. Senator Thompson, let's start with you. Where do you think the transportation bill is going? What advice do you have to our viewers? Well, uh, first off, I think one of the things I'd like to get over is this idea that we can't use general fund money for transportation. We have relied almost exclusively on, on the gas tax for, for roads and bridges. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, it is 34 of the 50 states that use general fund money. Now, why do I say that's important? Because we are now faced with... Um, a situation where we would not have to raise the gas tax or raise taxes to take care of our roads and bridges. And we all understand how important it is to get our, our goods to market from greater Minnesota, move them around. Obviously, we have many highways in greater Minnesota that have safety issues. We've got congestion issues and pothole issues in the Twin Cities. All of us agree. I think all 201 of us in the legislature agree that needs to be addressed. But if we are willing to prioritize, we don't need to make it more expensive for people to drive to work and back, gas tax being a very regressive tax. And, and we can do it by, by prioritizing and making transportation the focus that it should be, and we don't have to raise taxes to do it. Representative Purcell, let's, let's uh, go to you. What do you think? Thank you. And, and I, I think it remains to be seen as we move ahead and the governor put out a list of, of priority uh, projects around the state of Minnesota, a number of them up, uh, up uh, in my district, and they're, they're all over the state. But how do we come up with the funding to uh, achieve the uh, road and bridge infrastructure needs that we all have, and everybody acknowledges that absolutely. And and you know, woe be unto us if we go back to August 1st, 2007, and we have another bridge fall down. Nobody wants that, um, but it happened. Almost, uh, you know, I, I look back and I say, how in the world could that ever happen in Minnesota? Anywhere, but uh, in Minnesota. So we need to come up with adequate funding, and, and uh, the estimates on it are a little bit more than what the general fund, I believe, is going to support. Um, but I, I certainly am one who believes we can be as creative as we can be, even if we raise the gas tax. In 20 years, that's not going to get us where we need to go, because we're using less and less gas, less and less petroleum uh, every year. Uh, and that's by design. We're we're more more efficient with our vehicles, uh, and uh, more uh, electric cars and hybrid cars, and and that's all good. So we do have to weave our way forward. I, I'm not ruling out that there wouldn't be some kind of a of a, of an increase in petroleum taxes. I I don't know. I just don't want any more bridges falling down. So let's let's get where we need to go and fix the roads and. South Robert Street and County Road 11 up uh, east side of Bemidji that uh, just shake the bejesus out of you when you drive down those roads. So let's uh, let's do the best we can do, and uh, and I'm confident we can come up with a solution here that maybe we all can vote for here sitting at this table. You can't vote, Judge, but uh, they don't uh, everybody, everybody, everybody. I'm in a different branch, a different building. <laughs> Representative Rudolph. Well. You know, certainly there are a lot of different plans out there for what can be done. I mean, we, are, we hear that uh, we're, we're $6 billion behind what, in our infrastructure needs for the next 10 years. And uh, so there are various plans, uh, you know, raising taxes and such to do this. Now, in my conversations with, with folks in the House, uh, I believe that we can come up with a plan. I, I believe that we can come up with $6 billion without raising taxes. Uh, there are certainly efficiencies, there are priorities, uh, there are ways to use current monies. Uh, for example, uh, you know, a sales tax on tires. I'm just giving one relatively small example. But we could use that for roads and bridges and in our infrastructure. Um, so th there are possibilities. But I think at the end of the day, what we have to come up with is a sustainable, dependable, method of funding our roads into the future, because I, I think that's what the people of Minnesota expect us to do. Uh, we need to make sure that we do come up with what we need to do so that people have safe roads to drive on. 
Well, I, th I think this uh, has been in a conversation for a long time, and and it dep and what you come to support, I think, is based a little bit on what you believe to be true. And I do believe that the deficiency uh, in what we have for resources for transportation is significant, and I don't think that uh, the solution that we have can be one-time money or one-time expenditures, that we have to find a sustainable long-term funding proposal to fill in for how uh, far behind we are in our current system, much less make future investments. I know other countries are putting a lot of money into transportation and that they will become so capable of moving goods and services quickly that we again will lose our competitive edge in another arena if we aren't very careful. Uh, I think that we need a mix of uh, funding solutions. I'm not opposed to doing what we've always been doing, which is using some general fund money for transportation. We use general fund money by paying off the bonds that we sell for roads and bridges and for the corridors of commerce, which is a very important uh, initiative that uh, came out of the House, really, and was supported by the Senate for roads like Highway 14 mm -hmm. that are regional corridors in my district. Uh, but I, I don't think that's enough, and I think efficiencies is in, always important, that that's necessary for every function of government, that we always look to how can we do things more efficiently and how what are we doing that we shouldn't be doing anymore and get those dollars freed up for expenditure. But that won't be enough. And if we rely s solely on general fund money, uh, you know how hard it is to to grow the size of the general fund, and it means that if you're revenue neutral and you put more of that money towards roads and bridges, it's going to come away from the universities, it's going to come away from K-12, it's going to come away from support services for our disability community, for long-term care and for nursing homes, uh, so and for water quality protection. So I, I can't support a general fund solution exclusively for transportation. Just to be clear, uh, Judge and Senator Sharon, I wasn't <laughs> saying it should be general fund exclusively, but you know, you hit on something that's very important, which is general fund dollars are used to pay, you know, bonding uh, proposals. In the in the bonding bill that the governor proposed, and pretty close to what got enacted, of the one billion dollar bonding bill last year, eighty million for roads and bridges, eight percent. So, if we're talking about transportation being a priority, you would not have known it from the governor's bonding bill last, you know, those, those passed by the Democrat legislature. Now they're coming back saying, well, Republicans aren't paying attention to transportation, and yet there was a shot, and 8% of the bonding bill to transportation, that didn't help us. Interestingly, I think it's about $40 million in the bonding bill and about $47 million, or maybe the other way around, on the, on the cash bill that we had. And uh, it wasn't enough. That's right. The only thing is that it is the most we've ever done. Yeah. But we're still putting, not enough. We're putting more into a Senate office building that we don't need because the we office did, I have in now is just fine. Than we did on the roads and bridges. That's right. Well, without going on to the uh, whether or not we need the Senate office building, <laughs> uh, I, I do think that uh, a portion of the bonding bill needs to be spent on transportation. Uh, the more that we have a boundary also around how much we want to bond for, we want some, we want to pay attention to what the interest rates are, we want to make sure we're not taking more out of our general fund than we traditionally have for debt. Debt can be a problem if we're not careful. So we can fight over how to spend that money in the bonding bill, but that doesn't change the fact that that's one-time money and that money doesn't solve the long-term funding problem that we have and we need to have much, much broader sources of revenue than that in order to, to really have a sustainable improvement to our infrastructure. I agree with you that we need to be sustainable into the future, but I, I'm sure that the House Republican Caucus is committed to a much bigger share of local roads and bridge money in a bonding bill than we've ever had before. Well, we'll have more opportunities to discuss this in the weeks ahead, I think.